Despite society's encouragement of the event, many children feel very uncomfortable with Halloween. Recently, a video went viral on the web, sparking outrage among parents and experts. In it, people dressed as monsters frightened two children. The boy becomes extremely distressed and starts crying, but the adults do not stop the game. On the last day of October, Halloween is celebrated, a date on which children and adults from various countries around the world, mainly the United States, dress up and decorate their homes with pumpkins, spider webs, candles, and other macabre themes we often see in horror movies. In recent years, due to the influence of the Internet and American movies, this date has become popular in Brazil as well. Known as the Day of the Witches, October 31st is celebrated in many homes, companies, shopping malls, and even schools across our country. In some places, there are even costume contests and decorations competitions. What has drawn attention recently is that many Christians are joining in the trend and participating in Halloween parties. These people claim it's just an ordinary party. But is that really true? Is Halloween harmless fun? Could it be a sin? Or is it really an innocent celebration, as many say? And more importantly, can Christians take part in this celebration in some way? Or should they avoid it completely? That's what we'll be discussing in today's video. But before we begin, I would love for you to subscribe to my channel. Just click the button below the video, subscribe, and you'll see a bell next to it. It's essential to activate the bell so you receive all notifications whenever I upload a new video. Before we discuss whether Christians should celebrate Halloween, it's important to understand the origins of this celebration. Halloween originated in the 5th century BC with a people called the Celts, who lived in the countries of Ireland, England, and France. At that time, summer officially ended on October 31st, and the night of the 31st going into November 1st marked the new year for this people, also known as as the Lord of Death's holiday. The Celts considered November 1st the day of death because tree leaves were falling, nights were getting longer, and temperatures were dropping. In other words, it was autumn for them. They believed that the sun god was losing strength because of the Lord of Death. Additionally, they believed that on October 31st, the Lord of Death gathered the spirits of everyone who had died in the previous year since they had been trapped wandering between earth and the moon due to their evil deeds, and had not had the chance to go to paradise. So, on the night of the feast on the 31st, these spirits were allowed to return home and attempt to possess the bodies of the living, as, according to them, that was the only hope for spirits after death. Since people didn't want to be possessed by evil spirits, they took precautions to protect themselves such as making human and animal sacrifices as offerings to calm the Lord of Death and prevent the spirits from possessing or harming anyone. People would also extinguish the fire in their homes to make them cold and undesirable. Then, they would make lanterns out of pumpkin shells and dress in macabre costumes, making a lot of noise around the neighborhood to scare away the wandering spirits. Do you see the similarities between Halloween celebrations of the past and those of today. Just like the Celts, people light pumpkins to decorate their homes, and children wear masks and costumes, going door to door saying, trick or treat. Today, Halloween is so popular that it only loses to Christmas in terms of entertainment, with the market enticing people and generating billions of dollars annually from horror movies, costumes, decorations, and other things. Another important point is that Halloween is a significant date for followers of the Satanic Church. Many witches, Satanists, and devil worshippers prepare all year for this day. Besides being considered by them as Satan's birthday, it's the ideal day for human sacrifices and pacts with the enemy. With this in mind, my dear brothers and sisters, I ask you a question. Is Halloween really an innocent party with no connection to the evil forces of the spiritual world? It's very clear that it's not. This celebration has satanic roots, and we Christians cannot think that there's no harm in participating in these events. The Bible says, We must be cautious, 
because not everything that is fun and enjoyable comes from God. Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy the devil prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Now, another question arises. Should Christians completely avoid everything related to Halloween and all the movies and cartoons associated with this theme? Any pastor or spiritual leader asked this question would say that we should not get involved with such things because it displeases the Lord and distances us from His presence. But brothers, we need to go further. It's not enough to simply prohibit our children from watching these types of content or participating in these events at school, for example. Sooner or later, they will have access to content featuring monsters, ghosts, spirits, and so on. If we, as parents, merely take away any type of access to these contents and celebrations, they will likely be drawn to them even more, and by the time we realize it, it might be too late. I know people who came from religious families and ended up getting involved in some type of occultism as adults because their parents forbade them from seeing or hearing anything about these subjects without even talking to them about the dangers that stories and celebrations involving witches, monsters, spirits, and ghosts could pose to their spiritual lives. So, what's the best way to proceed, considering that our children and youth can access any type of content, good or bad, on their computers or phones? It's by teaching them to walk according to the Word of God and to discern what will build them up or not. Look at what is written in Proverbs chapter 22. Start children off on the way they should go, and even when they are old, they will not turn from it. Notice that the Bible doesn't say parents should only teach the way they should teach in the way. In other words, we should teach them the path, but we should also walk with them on that path. We need to walk side by side with our children, taking them to church, teaching them to pray, to read the Bible, and showing them what's right through our example. Sometimes it's challenging to guide children on the right path, especially nowadays. That's why we need to always pray, show them much love, and understand that teaching Christian values is our responsibility not that of the church pastor or school teacher. Look at what the Bible says. Fathers, do not exasperate your children. Instead, bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. It's the parent's role to pass on biblical knowledge pleasantly and wisely so that children won't want to turn away from the Lord, thinking He's a killjoy who forbids everything and doesn't want them to be happy on earth. It's important to say that God never does anything to harm us. He is a loving Father and wants us to experience His will, which is good, perfect, and pleasing. Amen? So, my brothers and sisters, instead of simply forbidding your children to attend Halloween parties at school or watch horror movies on Netflix, teach them that the origin of these things is not from God. This way, even if they choose to participate in these events or watch this content, they will feel very uncomfortable doing so. If you like this message, share it with your friends and family and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you in the next video. May God bless you.